I set out to build the biggest, fastest tree farm in all of Sky Factory 4, aiming to make a farm so powerful that I won't ever have to worry about resources ever again. I'm talking iron trees, diamond trees, redstone trees, and even cookie trees? Don't mind if I do. I'll be making 41 whole tree farms, each inside its own separate dimension, and with each iteration, I'll be working on ways to improve the design and workflow to create the ultimate farm. And it all starts with this. This is a hoppy bonsai. Unlike a vanilla Minecraft tree farm which uses TNT and TNT dupers, all you do is put down a chest, put down the hoppy bonsai, put in a piece of dirt, and then put in a sapling. And there you go, I now have an automatic tree farm. But this system on its own is really slow. I mean, just look at it. All I'm getting is a few items every now and then. That's why I'll be placing a ton of these inside of these compact machines. This is a separate dimension where I can build farms. And as long as the block itself is loaded in, the farm will run in the background, which drastically cuts down on lag. With all that out of the way, it's time to get placing. Now that I've placed down all these hopping bonsais, I need to fill them up with mulch. More specifically, I need blue mulch. Mulch is an item that speeds up bonsais, and in the case of blue mulch, trees grow 1000% faster and give 350% drop rates. The downside is that the creator decided that blue mulch just needs to be absurdly expensive compared to other more broken features. Our next goal is to get over 20,000 pieces of blue mulch, and to do that, we're going to have to do some science. To the lab! Welcome to my secret laboratory. We're here because mulch requires a lot of really annoying items to craft. So I had to set up this place for all my science needs. Mulch is split into seven tiers, and each tier needs a piece of the previous tier as an ingredient. So blue mulch uses black mulch, black mulch uses red mulch, red mulch uses ruby mulch, and so on. This means I need to start with the first tier, which is brown mulch. This one calls for four sticks and a piece of cocoa, which I already have thanks to a single jungle tree farm. Next up we have yellow mulch, which is made with one piece of brown mulch and four biofuel. This is where the science comes in. Biofuel comes from crushers. You need to run energy through this machine and then put in certain items like beetroots, cactus, saplings, or even potatoes. That then gets crushed into biofuel. And hey, I just built a giant potato farm the other day. So I have plenty of items to make biofuel with. Initially, when I started this project, I was thinking of making giant farms for all the ingredients, but I ran into some logistical issues. The best item to use with crushers is pumpkins, but I don't have a pumpkin farm. Especially not one big enough to make enough pumpkins for a giant crusher system. Also, potatoes are really bad with crushers, so the only item I can make a good crusher farm with is poison potatoes. But my potato farm just barely makes enough poison potatoes to handle two rows of crushers. So I scrapped that idea and settled on just making enough machines for the mulch. With just two rows of crushers, I have more biofuel than I need in a lifetime, so I finally finish up the yellow mulch. After yellow mulch, we now have amber mulch, which needs substrates. This is where things get more complicated. With crushers, all I need to do is have an item transporter wirelessly send items in a crusher and then have these red cables suck out the items from the right to send everything into my computer system. Substrate, on the other hand, uses pressurized reaction chambers, and this is a huge jump up from crushers. Take a look at this UI. Yeah, a lot going on here. Substrate is made by putting biofuel inside a pressurized reaction chamber. Then I need to run water into the system, as well as hydrogen. Where do you get hydrogen from? Why, this electrolytic separator, of course. It's just basic science. When you run electricity into water, it breaks down into two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. I then need to funnel this hydrogen out with these tubes and into my pressurized reaction chamber. Then I have to set it up so that biofuel gets sent into the pressurized reaction chamber and substrate gets pulled out. Also, I need to run water into this machine as well, and finally I have some electricity run through the machine, and now we finally made some substrates, woohoo! But it doesn't end there. Oh no, this is only the beginning. You see, when you make substrates, you also make a byproduct called ethylene. More specifically, you make 100 millibuckets of ethylene. And hey, guess what? There's a recipe where you basically duplicate substrate by running a piece of substrate into a pressurized reaction chamber with water and 100 millibuckets of ethylene and then you get eight whole pieces of substrates. So now I have to connect this pressurized reaction chamber up to another three pressurized reaction chambers because of how slow it is to duplicate substrates. Have all the extra oxygen that gets produced get sent into a gas tank where it all gets released. And that gets me all the substrate I need. 
Okay, we're finally done with this step. That means we now have Amber Mulch. Now on to the next step. To make Ruby Mulch, we need fertilizer. No, not the red and green fertilizer from before. This time we're using the all natural stuff. That's right, we're using manure. <coughs> to get fertilizer, first I need to create a sewer system and then place a bunch of animals on top. In my case, I'm using chickens! This creates raw sewage over time which I'll funnel into this composter, which will turn all the raw sewage into fertilizer, freshly made and ready for your garden. Now we're onto red mulch, which needs HDPE. And hey, guess what? HDPE is made from substrate. And we're using more pressurized reaction chambers. Instead of using water though, we actually need liquid ethylene to make HDPE. So once again, we'll need a new machine. Liquid ethylene is made by putting ethylene through a rotary condensator to turn it into a liquid. I then have to funnel it out into a pressurized reaction chamber together with some oxygen which I can get from the electrolytic separator from earlier. And finally just put in substrate and I'm done! I now have HDPE. This gets us up to red mulch. Black mulch actually doesn't use anything too special. Instead, we need 24 whole pieces of HDPE. Now it's finally time for the last step which is blue mulch. And this one needs wither dust and blue slime crystals. We finally moved away from all the sign CPS and now we just have this high tech stuff instead. This here is a simulation chamber from the deep mob learning mod. To use this, I had to kill a bunch of wither skeletons to get my hands on a wither skeleton skull first. And then use that to make a chip which I had to train by killing three wither skeletons. With this chip, I can now run simulations in the simulation chamber. All I need is power and polymer clay which is cheap to make. And now I just need to pray for the machine to make pristine wither skeleton matter for me. I can then run that through a loot fabricator to turn one pristine matter into six whole wither skeleton skulls. Each wither skeleton skull can be crafted into three wither dust. And as the simulations run, the chip will get upgraded to improve the odds. So it's easily the best source of wither skeleton skulls. As for the blue slime crystals, these are made by first crafting blue slimy mud. Then I have to cook it in a furnace and I now have a blue slime crystal. So I now have everything I need to finally get building. For my first tree farm, I started off by making a quartz tree farm because I like building with quartz blocks. It's just such a clean looking block. I filled up the layers with blue mulch and started planting a bunch of saplings to get the ball rolling. I then had to connect an item extraction cable below each one, set them all to send 64 items and run them into a single filing cabinet per layer. I know from experience that just sending items from a tree farm from one side is way too slow and clogs up the system. So I had three whole entrances which seems to be enough to not clog up the system, at least not noticeably. With just one row of bonsais done, I actually get enough quartz to run an auto crafter to make quartz blocks and have it run 24-7, so I can finally start building my base. I never said I was any good at building bases, okay? I put all my stats into building farms, not building houses. So after my little break, I continued filling in the layers of my quartz farm. I needed to run a cable through the farm that goes into the ground in the middle, and that connects up all four filing cabinets with my computer. The bottom layer was a bit annoying to set up because I had to build all around the center before I finally fill in the last one, and then replace the cables I broke to get every last tree farm set up. And there we go, that's one tree farm down. Now time for the other 40. For my second tree farm, I decided to go with something very important that I need for some of the later tree farms. Can you guess what tree it is? Take a moment to think about it. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel to keep up with all my wacky builds? Now then, do you have your answer ready? If you said the petrified tree, then you are correct. Petrified trees are what's used to make cobblestone. Now if you're familiar with Sky Factory 4, you'll know that there's these cobble gens instead. So having a tree farm for cobblestone is not exactly the most useful one out there. But as I found out, there's a very important recipe that requires molten seared stone, which you get by melting petrified amber, and that recipe is magma slimy dirt. Unlike the other trees, the slime trees use slimy dirt instead of mulch to grow, and magma slimy dirt is the best one, which requires dirt, a magma slime crystal, and a bucket of molten night slime. Night slime is made by combining molten seared stone, molten iron, and liquid purple slime. As for the magma slime crystal, that one requires me to slime a piece of magma slimy mud. I really need to create a proper blue slime tree farm for the rest of the blue slime crystals I need for the blue mulch, so I need to start crafting magma slimy dirt for that. Once that was done, I started building the blue slime tree farm, but I couldn't get much progress because of just how slowly the magma mud was coming in. That said, the farm was giving me more than enough materials for blue mulch, so I left it at that and moved on to the next farm. 
From here, I didn't exactly have a set order anymore. I already have all the materials I need for the tree farms. So I just went in a random order, starting with Prosperity Trees, which is another custom item. Building wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that I had to go into each individual item extraction cable and change the values one by one so that they send out a full stack of items each time. I tried to find a way to set this to 64 automatically online, but I think the only way to do so would be to edit the mod's code, which I don't know how to do. After making two more farms, I finally decided it was time to look into making the Wand of the Lazy Builder. This tool always intimidates me. I've used it in creative mode before and it's really powerful, even better than the building gadget, but the controls are so convoluted. It's like going from using MS Paint to using Photoshop or GIMP. The building gadget can't be used with custom items like the Hopping Bonsai's or the item extraction cables, which is why I've been manually placing them down this whole time. The Wand of the Lazy Builder though does work with custom items, but I couldn't figure out how to get the advanced ender core for the longest time because it doesn't show a recipe. Turns out, you need to use this recipe instead, the inactive ender core. Then to fill it up, you need to put down an end crystal and use the inactive ender core on it. Now I just have to craft a tool station and an infuser so that I can charge it up and we're good to go. Unfortunately, the wand of the lazy builder doesn't copy the preset from the item extraction cables, so I still had to set all of those manually, which is the most time consuming part of this whole process. So I only saved a few minutes from placing down all the cables manually. Also, I found out that the wand works weirdly with hopping bonsais. If you've played this mod pack before, you've probably noticed that you'll have hopping bonsais that don't stack together. This is because when you break a hopping bonsai, you get a different version that mentions its light gray color, so it counts as two different items. The wand only works with hopping bonsais that have been broken before, which doesn't help at all. Because I want to automate the process as much as possible, I set up some block placers and block miners as well as an item collector to automate breaking hopping bonsais for me to use with a wand. Now with all that set up, I can finally mass place both bonsais and item extractors. Now I've mostly got everything set. I continued on and made some more farms, getting up to 10 tree farms done. Now that I'm a fourth of the way done, I'm getting really fed up with manually editing each and every item extractor, so I finally looked into the item ducts from Thermal Dynamics. I vaguely remember hearing something about needing servos and retrievers, which I didn't want to deal with. But after testing things out, apparently the system only needs to use item ducts, which are cheap to make and easy enough to use. It seems like the item ducts don't work properly with filing cabinets, but they work perfectly fine with regular chests, even without servos or retrievers. And they don't require me to change any settings, so this would make building much faster. And of course, as usual, I had to make a farm to gather all the materials for the item ducts. This time, I needed hardened copper glass. This comes from combining obsidian and copper together in an alloy infuser, which means that I have to make an automatic obsidian farm. Thankfully, I've seen a video of this before, so I knew it was possible, which made it a lot easier to figure out what the design is like. I just had to get three automatic users, one for automatically filling a cauldron with lava, one for gathering water in buckets, and then one to use a bucket of water on a cauldron of lava. Then, these get funneled out into the computer for automating the hardened glass. With that out of the way, I can finally start building the next farm. For some reason, the item ducts don't work with a wand of the lazy builder in survival mode. It's unfortunate, but at least manually placing the item ducts is much faster than manually changing all the item extraction cables, so it's still a win in my book. My workflow drastically improved thanks to this new design, so it only took me about 25 minutes to finish a single farm instead of one hour. Unfortunately, just like with my potato farm, my game was now starting to lag pretty hard. Just look at how long it takes for me to eat this apple. Turns out with a giant potato farm and over 20 tree farms running, your game will still lag like crazy even if FPS is stable. Gee, who would have thought? To cut down on the lag, I decided to remove the farms I'm not currently using and put them into storage. See how convenient these compact machines are? From here I continued on, making tree farm after tree farm, going down the line. I even made tree farms for things like olive trees and ironwood trees, though I did ignore all the twilight forest trees since a handful of them don't even give saplings. Once I was done with all the trees that used mulch, it was finally time for the slime trees. I actually decided to scrap my old slime tree farms since they used the older design. Yeet! But now came the next issue which is the fact that I still don't have enough slimy magnetors. Night slime just takes so long to make. This is after over 24 hours of AFKing since when I first built this farm by the way. So now I gotta speed this up. A lot. I decided it was finally time to build a giant smeltery with the Tinker's Construct mod. Every single empty space inside this giant furnace is a space for a single item, so it's very quick to expand. 
And of course, with all the new stuff built on my island, I've started attracting mobs. So naturally, this happened. Thank god all I lost was my computer, so I can't complain too much, but I'll have to deal with the mobs another time. I tried to overcomplicate the system by adding an alloy maker, but I realized later that the system alloys the melted materials into night slime on its own, so I then funneled it all into the fluid crafter and even got to add a second fluid crafter thanks to how fast the system runs. Just look at how beautiful my islands become. This is why I can't play with other people, because your home will turn into this. Now that I finally have all the slimy dirt I need, I can finally continue building. I went in and built each of the slime tree farms using the same exact design as earlier. Thankfully there's only 3 slime trees, so it took another hour and a half to finish the rest of these farms. And with the blue slime farm done, I have officially finished making a tree farm for every resource tree in the game. Besides the twilight forest trees, all I'm missing are sugarcane and coarse fruit, but those will need different designs instead. With this last farm done, it's now time for me to do something about these mobs. But hey, until the next farm build, why not check out the giant potato farm I built last time if you haven't already.